I, I agree setup. that if the AFL grant North a priority pick, they will force their hand yep. and force them to trade it, which means that clubs aren't completely let down and yep. um, don't get any benefit from it. But um, I'd be staggered if they got pick one and pick two. I, I think that they'll get a pick for in the middle of round it's too one. Too much to be hit on the rest. Yeah, of the I think it'll Karen. be the middle of round one or the end of round yeah, one. Yeah, the round one. Gold Coast have received then the round one. Yeah. It, so so it, if it, it was well pick be. nineteen, if it was pick nineteen, their hand would be full. So would have to trade that pick, and you're still going to get a good player. Yeah, but I, I think they're so. I think they're you know heading to VFL level the way they're going at the moment. They need to do something. I reckon take your hit once. The, no, it, because, there'd be a mutiny if they gave them one. Well, but, but I like you. Imagine point. Collingwood I, under I, you. The AFL, well, that's right. But the, the problem is they've made the mistakes, North Melbourne, but we have to get North right. If we're going to keep them, right, and we want to, you've got to get them right this year. You can't wait for the year after the year after that because Tasmania is going to be on front and centre in everyone's mind. Now, the top two of the top three uh, draft picks this year are both gun South Australians. So Adelaide would be absolutely, or even Port Adelaide, up for a deal. Math, uh, uh, Matthias Philip, who is a 192 centimetre impact player, Tom Scully, a new Tom Scully, is a 204 centimetre key forward. So there's some really good players in I there think, for a team building up. I think, Eddie, to your point, whatever it ends up being and whatever the picks ends up being, this is a much bigger problem than just David Noble and some new recruits. No. This isn't the review that Carlton had with a lot of star players who are underperforming, who bounce back under Michael Vosros. This is a club that's in desperate need of new direction and but know, I mean Brad Scott foresaw no, this a few right. years ago he did and he had that his narrative of the rebuild and continue taken away from him so but they need more young talent and to Eddie's point Crouch was a BNF winner in a grand final year and Walker's an all Australian he's still king 50 a year so we recognise their senior core is as thin as they're in, in the AFL and they need those that cultural driver and more young talent I think AFL clubs would digest it better if it's a a one-year hit and move on, as opposed to a multi-year assistance. Personally, package. I can't see Taylor Walker leaving Adelaide for North Melbourne. But anyway, I know it is. Thing. None of these players will come until they know who is going to be coaching them. And we say again tonight that David Noble's future is definitely under a cloud. He spoke at Arden Street today. All I can say is I've met Jeff for ten minutes. Say good day. Um, I've worked with Jeff on a couple of different projects with the AFL. Haven't had any time to, to sit down with him, and you know we're not going to make an ongoing commentary on what we're talking about. I've said good day, and that's that's all it's, I've had any involvement with him so far. Have you been given any assurances on next year, or have you sought any assurances on next year? No, no I I don't believe I need any. To be honest with you, I've, I'm really comfortable. I've got ongoing conversations with the board, spoken to Sonia, um, meet with Ben regularly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not comfortable where we're at from a footy team perspective. Just to, to clear that up, but I mean, I've said all the way along, we've got a clear direction that we want to take. We understand that rebuilds are really difficult. David Noble speaking today just before training. A lot of the cameras, um, Eddie, were actually around Jeff Walsh, who was sitting on the bench, <laughs> meeting a few new people, people that he probably knew from his couple of times there at North Melbourne. But the, I think the fascination with the football fan, particularly North Melbourne ones, Ed, is what is he actually going to be doing in there? We all know that he's doing a review, but the day-to-day -day and what that looks like. He was pretty successful in the review at Carlton, well, so far anyway. You've employed him on a couple of occasions. Uh -huh. How do you see this these four weeks actually playing out? I, I hear Mark Robinson referring to him as the Grim Reaper uh, and or the hitman coming in. That's not Jeff Walsh. He's been called a toe cutter, I think, in yeah, the Yeah, but he, uh, everyone comes up. I, I, I wrote on Saturday this will be a hit job. I believe it will be. No, it's well, only four weeks and he'll be sitting in the box with the coaches every week. Well, but so one thing they do do, if we talk about the Carlton review... I'm glad I answered that. No, well, I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> sorry. I, I don't want you just to bag Robert when I, I actually said it as well. well, well but we talk about the Carlton review. They went in and Pavlich and Walsh and they he sat down, they it was the end of the season, they interviewed every player, every staff member, and they got a full picture. Yep. If that was the... So reviews require interviewing. So can that happen? grabbing in? players. For that to be done in season, if I... As a senior coach, that'd be incredibly unsettling and a distraction. I remember Chris Palkin come to St Kilda in 2011. He got appointed as a footy manager halfway through. And we actually made the finals there. He stood up in the review and said, look, everyone... After this meeting, just make an appointment, come and see me. If anyone's got any problems, you know, I'm the man to come to. It was just, it was disrespectful and unsettling. In this case with Jeff Walsh, from my experience with Jeff is, 
He, he will look at what's going on. He knows the feel of things. It doesn't mean he doesn't make mistakes along the journey, but I go back, everyone talks about uh, 2017 when we looked at what we were doing and, and Nathan Buckley stayed on and we made the grand final the next year. I go back to 2008 when no one knew that we did a big review, but we did. And he actually came with a dossier that he presented to me and the board that said, if all things being equal, we will win the flag in 2010. That's the way we're tracking or we'll be giving it a good shout. And he missed by a week because it was a draw. And he was able to pinpoint what we needed on the field. He was able to get in and support Mick Malthouse. We actually then worked out what we were going to do as far as the um, transition from Mick Malthouse to another coach and what we wanted to do with Mick. And there he is, Jeff Walsh, who's been involved in more final series than any other administrator in football, I think, in the last 25, 30 years. Going back to Fitzroy Carlton the first time around, then North Melbourne as a football director, then as a, as a CEO, and he was fantastic twice at Collingwood. So I wouldn't be worried if you're at, at North Melbourne if you're any good. Um, you're probably, if, if you're not fitting in, that's not to say anyone who goes is not good, but if he doesn't think you fit in with what you need to do going forward at this football club, then he will call. Which has already been flagged by the club. I mean, Sonia hood Caro came out in a made pretty it, strong it, statement and said, clear. things aren't going well, we need to make change, and change will happen quickly. It, look, it's just, it's tough, Sam, because you've got Paul Ruse there as well, although he hasn't been there, he's been absent, with Jared Murphy. He's in the US, the, mate. This is a, yeah, completely. He's getting a green card. This, he's this, this is a club with not a lot of money. I mean, I hate to be brutal. I know their debt is not the issue it once was, but they've done well financially. But why are they spending money on all these outside people? The impression is correct that they don't themselves know what to do. And Sonia Hood is a new president. Yeah. She inherited this basket case from Ben Buckley, who delivered a coach and put him under way too much pressure, talking yep. about but, premierships, etc., and a footy department that is clearly, to a degree, dysfunctional. But, I'm telling you, Ed, there is a culture of finger-pointing and self-preservation there that is dragging that club down. And while we're on the subject, this is what David Noble has got to deal with over the next month or two. Let's have a look at North Melbourne's run home as it is because it's not happy reading. I mean, I'm not sort of Bring saying... on the we, bottom of the ladder, there's well, no easy games. bottom of the ladder, there's no easy games. <laughs> but really, Geelong, Collingwood, Richmond and Hawthorne and they're for the next four. Yeah. And then, well, Essendon, obviously, Sydney, Adelaide, Gold Coast, not too bad. But the next four weeks, which are the weeks of the Jeff Walsh review, it's going to be pretty tough in that coach's box. Right? Yeah, it's frightening. And uh, I think there's two narratives. We, we recognise they haven't got enough talent. But the narrative around the younger talent like Thomas and Horn, I think if that was going better, there'd be less noise. And even how Jeff Walsh was appointed... There's no probably clear is, picture or strategy. Yeah, Jeff Walsh was appointed. Was, was it from the top or a, a director goes off and finds Jeff Anthony and brings Anthony Stevens him back? approached him and then Jeff approached um, the president, Sonia Hood, right. the, um, around the week that all those recruiters okay, left. Yeah. Extraordinary. Anyway, but what you do... You, you get, don't forget it was this time last year that... Uh, uh, that Luke Sayers was uh, seen to be uh, uh, throwing bombs at Carlton and it was a disgrace and what was going on. It's, you've got to actually sometimes put the foundations in and make a mess before you can actually get things... Look, got to you know, be a the way Luke change. treated some of the people involved. Yeah. Yeah, but you've got to crack a few eggs. But it's not a perfect world. Unfortunately, it doesn't all line up. It doesn't, doesn't work the way people like to write it sometimes so in the it, papers. It, it's, it's actually what happened. Kate Liddell so was disrespected. You don't go and try that? and find another CEO when you've got one in the job who doesn't know. And Carlton have got to have him Luke, doing that. Luke well, got into the weeds. In the pudding Luke got into the weeds. Yeah. In, during COVID, he went up where the teams were and stayed and got a feel and... And that spiked, uh, well, I need to have a deeper look. That's yeah. really what happened. That's it. He did what needed to be done as the president and all credit coming into the club and for the first time in, what is it, how long since Carlton have actually looked like Carlton? Oh, 25 years 20, nearly. Yeah, uh, by definitely. the way, Sonia Hood, we asked Sonia to come on tonight and uh, quite fairly she said through the club, through Ben Amafio, that uh, she has said they're not going to talk until Jeff Walsh's review is up and then she'll be on the show. That's three weeks. Sonia Hood will be our special guest. It's a four-week review, Cluster. isn't it? Or oh, four weeks, then. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Carol. <laughs> Give her a bit of time. That's all right. Three weeks, four weeks. Um, but, Eddie, just quickly, a yes night. or no answer. You still expect major change out of this review? Oh, well, you're not getting... <laughs> they're on the bottom of the ladder. They've won one game. No, I know, but you, you're look, disagreeing with it being a hit job, but you do think there will be No, but I think the other change. thing to take into consideration here is, and speaking to a lot of the recruiters today, because I wanted to get a feel for what people felt about all this sort of stuff. And the one thing that came to me from uh, one senior recruiter was they'd be better off actually getting a bit extra in the soft cap to get some people in to help them 
facilitate all this? Because you can give them as much as you like. If they waste it, then it's just been a waste. That's, of that's not going to happen, though, is it? Well, it, I just think at the moment, if we're going to put all the time and effort into Tasmania, we've got to get North Melbourne right. Now, I came up with an idea that puts them both together. All right, if they don't want that, that's fine. Here's the next best. We want a strong Tasmania. We want a strong North Melbourne. Otherwise, I can tell you, the footy, uh, people aren't going to line up to have shocking games. Now, when I look at it, you say, where's all the, 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 the great crowds coming? The traditional rivals are all there. When they're playing other teams that aren't the, the, the traditional sides, the expansion clubs, it's struggling a bit at the moment. Now, hopefully we'll get the change this week when Gold Coast plays Collingwood. It should be a big one. But we have to make sure no business in the world at the moment is stretching itself to spend more money on a lesser product. They don't Everyone's need more money in the soft cap here. They just need right people in the right jobs. Yeah, but I think the soft cap is still underdone. I'm just saying that the football world says, all right, we're happy to give you this on one occasion. Don't muck it up. And that's why I'm, I'm glad to see Sonia Hood has appointed Jeff Walsh. And I think if he can get other people in to augment where he sees there's holes, that would be a, a good thing.